All right, Shalom. Mom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Al Shai Wawachar Kodash, which Yahweh is the Heavenly Father's true name. Yahweh Shai is in the world, ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, that's his true name. And Rachar Kodash is the Holy Spirit. I'm also going to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well in the scriptures. And salutations to all the brothers out there pushing his word in all truth and in all sincerity. And this lesson, we're going to get into how, you know, this kingdom, which is the kingdom of Esau, this uh, place that we're living in, whether you be, you know, in America, you know, in Europe, you know, Australia, you know, you know parts of Asia, wherever, the Middle East, if you're a Hebrew Israelite, this place is not your rest, okay? This, uh, this kingdom is not um, here for you to, you know, prosper, okay? All right, you know, you're going to go through trials and tribulations. You're going to deal with many afflictions, all right, as the scriptures talk about, okay? And um, I was reading, I was inspired to do this lesson by a particular scripture that I read in 2nd Ezra, which we're going to get uh, in a moment, about how we're pilgrims, okay? And um, I decided to look up the word pilgrim, and this is what I uh, got. And this is uh, from edamonline.com. This is the etymology of pilgrim. And a pilgrim is a person traveling to a holy place. Okay? All right? As a traveler, generally... Actually, I'm going to keep reading. As a uh, penance or to discharge some vow or religious obligation or seeking some miracle or spiritual benefit. A traveler, generally a uh, wayfarer. Okay? Pilgrim, crusader, foreigner, stranger. Okay, so we're... We're, you know, strangers, all right? We're foreigners traveling to a holy place, all right? Right now, we're just living in this society, you know, uh, temporarily, okay? We're just passing on, you know, by. And we're, we're trying to get uh, to what? You know, that holy place, you know, the kingdom of heaven. You know, where all good things dwell, as the um, scriptures talk about in Second Ezra, okay? So this is why, you know, we're not supposed to get comfortable in this society. Yes, you know... You may have an opportunity to maybe start a business. You know, you may have an opportunity to get a promotion at the job. You know, you may have a family. Yes, these things, you know, can and will occur at times, but we're not supposed to get comfortable here. We're not supposed to be, you know, complacent, okay? Just always remember in the back of your mind that at any moment you can lose these things. You know, because this society is, you know, uh, temporary, all right? Things come and go here. We always have to remember that, okay? But let me start off with, um, from this, uh, let me start off with this scripture here in Micah 2 and 10. It reads, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with the sword of destruction. And that's what we need to do. We need to arise and depart, first and foremost, spiritually. That's what we need to do. Everything starts off in the spirit, okay? And how do you do that? You um, detach yourself from the ways of this world, okay? You follow the, the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, okay? Which are the law, statutes, and commandments. Being holy as the Heavenly Father and His Son are holy, all right? Which means, you know, being separate. That's what we have to do. We have to have a complete different conduct than the rest of, the, of this world, all right? See, this um, society teaches you to pretty much go after your lust. Whatever you feel, whatever you want, go after it. Even if there's, um, even if it's a negative thing, all right, and there's consequences to it, don't worry about it at that present moment. Deal with the, the now and how you feel. That's what this society teaches you, and that's because it's run by Esau, Edom, okay? The basis of man, all right, the man that um, lives on his belly, which that, you know, uh, means pretty much he lives by his desires. Whatever his flesh um, says, you know, hey, he, he does it. He has no self-control, okay? And we're not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to, you know, have, you know, a standard, uh, a particular conduct to us, okay? You see? I'm going to keep reading, um... And uh, I think I'll get this uh, this second Ezra now. 
And this is us. 2 Ezra 16 and 40 says, Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the, to the battle. And what battle is that? All right. It's this spiritual battle, first and foremost. You know, everything, like I said, starts off in the spirit. Then everything after that, you know, um, you know, turns physical. Okay. Because we're, we're, we're um, in a spiritual battle, as it talks about in Ephesians, the uh, sixth chapter. Okay? We're in this spiritual battle. Because that's what it's really about. Everything's about the spirit. You know, yes, you know, hey, you know, Esau physically wants to take us down. But realistically, he, it's the spirit. You know, he, he doesn't want us to be, you know, Hebrew Israelites. He doesn't want us to be who we really are. Okay? And you see us returning unto the Heavenly Father. This is upsetting Him because we're not following His ways. Okay? We're not saying that basically He is a, a God anymore. We're saying that, look, we don't need you to uh, uh, basically uh, uh, run our lives anymore. We don't need you as a, a leader. And He's upset about that. You know? Okay? And uh, I'm going to keep reading. It says... Make ye ready to, to thy battle. And it says, And in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. And see, we have to be those pilgrims. Okay? You know, those foreigners. Those, you know, uh, what did it say? Uh, what a pilgrim was? A foreigner? A traveler? You know, going to the holy place. You know? That's how we have to be. One that's, you know, uh, trying to go to the, uh, you know, to the kingdom. Okay? That's what we need to be doing. All right? We can't be, you know, worried about the things of this life. And it's going to get into that. Right here in verse 41. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. He that buyeth, as one that will lose. He that occupieth, you know, merchandise, as he that hath no profit by it. And he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth, as he should not reap so also he that planteth the vineyards as he that shall not gather the grapes they that marry as they that shall get no children and they that marry not as the widowers okay so that's how we have to be even if you know you may be doing you know particular things in your life just remember these things can go away at any moment and they will go away because look as the scriptures talk about which we'll get in a moment you know the fashion of this world pass it away you know so even if you have a business or you know like i said you may have a nice position at your job you may have a family you know you may have a home look these things are going to go at some point you always have to remember that they're going to go because look we're not we're not taking anything with us all right once we um you know get into uh th those chariots you know your house is not going with you you know, your business, your job, those things aren't going with you. Only thing that may, you know, go with you is your family if the Lord, you know, uh, uh, sees them fit, if, you know, uh, for you and your family to make it. But even then, you might not even have family members that uh, uh, that will make it. Your parents might not make it. Your, your wife, your children, they may not make it. They may be uh, destined to be destroyed here. You might be the only one that uh, 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 will be saved. Out of uh, your, your family. So you have to remember these things. Okay? So don't get too caught up, you know, with the affairs of this uh, 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 of this life. Which, you know, we'll get that scripture in a moment too. Don't, uh, I think it's uh, don't be entangled with the affairs of this world. If I'm not mistaken. We'll get that in a moment. But let me finish this off. It says, and, there, and this is in 2nd Ezra 16 and 45. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. And, and that's the, the two-thirds of our people. They labor in vain. They don't... Understand that, look, this society is going to come to an end at some point. Okay? They, they don't understand that this is not the end-all, be-all. All right? See, our people really believe that this uh, way of living is going to continue forever. And they want to prosper in this particular place that they're living in. You know? And you, they're going to, you know, um, you know, they're going to have a rude awakening very soon. It's not going to be pleasant. You know, once they start losing all these things, you know, whatever they have, you know, um, in this society. And they're going to be wondering why this is happening. 
Okay? And we know why this is happening. It's because this is the judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. This kingdom was never meant to stand. It was only a temporary kingdom. Okay? You see, the kingdom that's uh, uh, to come, all right, uh, of uh, the, you know, uh, of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, the Heavenly Father, good morning, that uh, uh, this kingdom, all right, that's to come, is going to be an everlasting kingdom. As it's um, talked about in, uh, I believe that's Daniel's the second chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? The everlasting kingdom. All right? Okay? I'm going to keep reading. This is 2 Ezra 16 and 46. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses, and take their children captives. For in captivity and famine shall they get children. You see? These um, these things that our people have, these strangers are gonna get them. All right, you know these uh, uh, uh you know foreign troops, you know, maybe even uh, another uh, you know individual in their neighborhood because it talks about in Second Ezra the 15th chapter how you know neighbors are gonna invade one another because of uh you know um pretty much lack of resources and for great tribulation. So uh, people are going to lose a lot of things. They're laboring in vain. That's why the scriptures talk about, you know, store, you know, heavenly tre uh, treasures and not, you know, co you know uh, those corrupt treasures. I think that's in Matthew's the sixth chapter. Okay. Now from here, um, I think I uh, quoted that, um, that second Timothy. I know I was quoting a lot of scriptures, but I want to get this one in particular. This is a uh, second Timothy chapter three, I believe. Maybe it's chapter 2. You have chapter 2 and 3 to 4. This is 2 Timothy 2 and 3. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. You see, you're not supposed to entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. You're not supposed to worry about things in this place. Just remember, this, these things aren't going to save you, okay? Your family isn't going to save you. Your job, your house, your business, whatever it is, it's not going to save you. Only Yahweh Bashim Shai, okay? And look, Yahweh Bashim Shai is going to, you know, eradicate this, you know, society. So don't worry about the things in this place. It's already bypassing us as we speak. You know, especially, you know, this uh, past year, you know, starting with, you know, 2020. It shows you that this place is really uh, uh, diminishing, you know. It was already showing signs prior to, uh, you know, 2020, but 2020 has been a, um, has been a heavy year. You know, first it started off with, you know, um, with the bang with, you know, World War Three, pretty much, you know, uh, escalating. Then from there, what? We had the coronavirus situation that basically locked down this entire world, which changed everybody's lives. You can't even go into a store without having a mask, being six feet apart, people being scared and afraid that, you know, that this virus is going to kill them. You have all these, you know, racial uh, uh, tensions going on, race, you know, uh, uh, basically a, ra a race wars being, you know, brewed up. And look, uh, um... As you know, the apostle was talking about, and you know, he's got to use some common sense. When we talk about a race war, we're not actually talking about, you know, people being lined up on one side of the street, okay, and the other side of the street, and they just clash. No. What that means is just there's going to be racial tensions. There's going to be, you know, some type of, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, battle, you know, because, you know, hey, look, the Israelites are being persecuted, and Jake is tired of it. And Esau's tired of Jake rising up because they want to keep their power. They, do, they don't want to, uh, uh, you know, basically give everything up. They want to um, maintain what they have. So there's tension right there. And it talks about in the scriptures anyways that there's, you know, that there's a battle. All right. There was a battle between us and the womb. This is an, uh, this is an everlasting, you know, um, uh, battle. All right. Okay, but you know you had that happen. You had all these riots, you know, 
these looters. And now what, what is it back to? Coronavirus again. And it's shutting everything down. Businesses are uh, uh, collapsing, especially small businesses. Okay? The, the housing market is terrible right now. Just saw, you know, articles on that. How pe people are, you know, behind on rent. They're their mortgages. Okay? See, Yahweh Bashim Shai is really plaguing this place, man. And it's only going to get worse. So don't uh, entangle yourself with the affairs of this life, all right? And it says, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And ultimately, Yahweh Bashim Shai has chosen us to be, you know, his, um, his soldiers, all right? His men. Okay, so we have a duty to do. We're in a war. And like I stated earlier, this is a spiritual warfare. And eventually it's going to get carnal. Eh? The Lord is going to give us those spiritual powers to execute the judgment that, that is written. He's going to um, use us as his, um, uh, as his weapons of warfare, as the scriptures talk about. All right? So a lot of things are about to occur. You see? All right? So don't worry about this place. This place is only temporary. And uh, let me get that. Fashion. I think it's in somewhere in Peter, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, no, it's in Corinthians. I'm going to get this. It says uh, here in uh, 1 Corinthians 7. You know what? Let me start actually at 29. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 7 and 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. You see, this time is short. This is not a, you know, um, in reality... Of the uh, concept of time, this is not a long duration, all right? Once you really understand, you know, time and how it works, you realize that this is uh, nothing but, you know, a blink of an eye, okay? But it says, but this I say, brother, and the time is short. It remains that both they that had, have wives be as though they had none. See, we're not supposed, you know, us brothers, you know, because there's brothers out, you know, out there preaching to have, you know, Wives and children. We're not even, you know, yeah, we, we take, you know, we take care of our business. We handle our business, you know. But we, we're not really focused on our families like that. Because we know we have um, other obligations to attend to. Which is serving Yahweh Ba Shemi Al Shah and feeding the flock. Okay. You see. And it says, and they that weep as though they weep not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And you know, we're not supposed to be worrying about the things of, you know, this world. You know, I'm going to keep reading. It says, and they that use this world is not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passeth away. See, the, the fashion of this world is passing away. You know, it's not meant to, you know, uh, last. And it, you see it. If the Lord has really opened up your eyes, you can see this is not uh, going to last. This way of life. The Lord's not going to allow a wicked society to flourish. There's no way. So what does he do? He sends out plagues. He sends out plagues to the world to destroy, you know, what's, uh, you know, what's in it. You know, the, the, the wicked works that are, you know, therein, you know. So, you know, we, we brothers, you, we just got to stay focused. Keep our eye on the prize, man. That's the main thing. And the scriptures even talk about that. Okay. So that's the main thing, keeping our eye on the prize and, you know, not worrying about the uh, the things in this life, okay? And with that, you know, I'm going to end it off. Hey, just remember, hey, we're just pilgrims, which are those strangers, those foreigners that are traveling to the holy place. You know, remember that. You know, this is just a temporary, you know, place of staying right now, okay? And with that, you know, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to you. How about Shemi al -Shai? Also, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and salutations to all the brothers out there. Shalom.